We're talking with uh, Lee from another member of Male Care Support Group Network. Lee is out as a gay man with prostate cancer. Welcome. Tell us how you got diagnosed and what choices you were making around that. They did this suite of tests and my PSA came back 26. And he said, you need to see a urologist. By the time I got in to see the urologist, it was a month and my PSA had doubled. We scheduled a biopsy. But he said, yeah, you have prostate cancer. There's no fooling around. He immediately put me on bitalutamide for two weeks and then on to Lupron shots. The biopsy came back Gleason 9. The doctor in oncology, Dr. Zhang, was fabulous. I mean, he started right out with, listen, people have said I don't have the best bedside manner. I'm a research guy. So I just, you ask me a question, I will answer it. I will tell you what. It is. And that was perfect for what I needed right then. What I needed right then was somebody to say, okay, this is what the research shows me. This is what clinical studies have shown. And we went on from there. And I said, okay, well, what is, what is it looking like here? The next thing that happened was after the bicalutamide stopped working, the Casadex. Then, of course, I needed to go to Extandi and they wanted me on Exchiva. But it started me off in a really, really bad place. You know, I couldn't, was afraid to have friendships, afraid to be around men. I couldn't go anyplace. I couldn't do anything. And it was pretty awful. It was pretty awful. I, grew, I had a horrible childhood. And so I have real problems with self-image. You know, I, I thought I was ugly till I was 19. Then I went away to college and realized people didn't run away when they saw me. So it was, I tend to have just withdraw into myself and just, you know, okay, well, you know, and just go on. Just sure. don't deal with the interviewing the doctor. It was okay, I'm gay. Is that a problem? It was a problem for the last doctor. This is what happened. And and there was no problem whatsoever, not a single problem. And the kind of doctor who I think listened to me, because I mentioned that all of the biblical quotes that they had posted on the walls in the waiting room made me a little uncomfortable. And the next time I came in, they were gone. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know whether it was due that they were redoing it or whether it was because what I said, but it made me feel heard. It made me feel more relaxed because when I walk in someplace, I see a bunch of biblical quotes. I'm always worried that they're going to hold my being gay against me, you know, and there are, there are doctors who have had the courts back them up now that they don't have to deal with gay people. Yeah. So, you know, it was, I was having the two weeks before I get my three month shot. It was just insane. It was, and literally I'd be walking in a room and I suddenly, I start crying for no reason at all. And then I'd be angry at the air. And then the whole thing was just hysterically funny. And it was like, wait, no, 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 I'm all out of control here. What's going on? And it was, I think, due to the Lupron. I really do. I, once I stopped and it got out of my system, I have felt great ever since. Now my PSA started going up so that I had to stop the Extandi. And then docetaxel. I could only take four of those because it was too toxic. And then, but I just finished Plavicto and now, you know, my PSA is not down where anybody would like it. It's still 6.5, but that's much better than the 99 when I started. So it's, now I feel physically, I feel great. I'm just a little tired all the time. I feel that the uh, system has a problem with people, with patients who advocate for themselves that my experience has been, for the most part, that you don't question the doctors, you do what you're told, and you just follow along. You know, it was like, oh, here we go again. Oh, my God. What am I going to do now? I have to go through this whole thing, pissing off a whole bunch of people by finding a new doctor. And so... You know, I got enough stress in my life without adding to it. <laughs> How do you teach them to be an advocate for themselves? 
Well, I don't know that you can teach someone how to be an advocate for themselves. You just have to remember to, to speak up. You remember to do your research. And by that, I mean, you go online, you go to mail care, you go, go to Google and ask AI and then triple check to make sure that they didn't, that the AI didn't make it all up. But you get your information and have it written down and then ask your doctor about it. You know, I read this. What do you think? And that, that way you're not coming in and sitting down with, all right, doctor, now you listen to me. That is not going to work. But by having, you know, I always always have a list of questions when I go into my doctor. Between appointments, every time I think of something I want to talk to one of my doctors about, I open up the document that's dated for the, my next appointment, add that in as a question, or if I see something that I want to ask them about, uh, I'll, I'll link to a website, that sort of thing. I always put that information and I've got that in my hand. I'm one of those people who thinks if I don't need a drug, why should I take it? So I try and take fewer drugs. I feel that that is better for me. Tell me how being a gay man who's lived through the Stonewall period and the pre-Stonewall period, the coping skills that you've developed over the years, how that helps you or hinders you around taking care of yourself vis-a-vis -vis prostate cancer. Well, I became very involved in the gay community when I moved to Chicago in 75. Had the existential experience of, for the first time in my life. I was 26 years old, and for the first time in my life, I was living someplace where it wasn't illegal to be gay. It wasn't a felony. Um, and not being an outgoing person, it's very difficult for me to walk up to someone and just start talking unless I have a reason. So I joined the local gay center and got very involved in the gay community, consequently. And then through that, learned that you need to speak up. Went through the whole silence equals death thing when AIDS came around. You, know, you need to speak out. You need to stand up. But you need to have your background done. You need to know what you're talking about. So that helped me advocate for myself when the time came because I had been doing it, advocating it for gay people, pushing the gay agenda, whatever that is, but working for gay rights and, and trying to make the world better for everyone and especially LGBTQ plus people. So I think that's that helped me. That helped me a lot by being involved in the community and learning to stand up for the community. Therefore, I could stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lee, thank you very much for today's discussion. You've certainly touched on some points that I'm sure resonate for a lot of people who are listening today. And your suggestion of if you stand up for the community, you could figure out how to stand up for yourself. You know, usually it's the other way around. Yeah. But in, <laughs> you know, but here it is, you know, you do what you need to do. Thank you very much. Thank you for being part of Mail Care. And we all wish you well with your continued health. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all that you do. It's incredibly invaluable resources appreciated by us all. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.